Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this very windy top of a USC parking structure above the city's newest vaccine distribution site. We're here at USC's University Park campus, not to just talk about the better days ahead, the hope that we feel in our hearts that hangs on the horizon, but to act to make those better days real. That's what getting the COVID-19 vaccine is all about. It's about manifesting our hopes. It's about materializing those dreams we have had for a year of being locked down to see our economy, our city, and our world reopen. And the act of getting a vaccine moves us one step closer to the return to the lives and the loved ones we've been missing so badly. An act that brings peace of mind and safety to individuals and families, to communities. An act of hope, of opportunity, and above all, of love. We've got a real dream team that is assembled here today of folks that are giving, providing, and getting vaccines. And that's what happens every single day here at USC and six other sites across LA, part of a network of over 500 sites where Angelinos can get vaccines. The, runs, the ones that the city of Los Angeles runs include six other static sites and eight soon to be 10 mobile sites, giving about 16,000 Angelinos a vaccine every single day. And since December, when LA got its first vaccine doses, the city of LA has helped the county by administering nearly 700,000 vaccinations at city-run locations. And as today, as part of that, we're gonna add three very special vaccines. We brought together our elected officials, including our amazing supervisor, who's come to us from her state service, before that, her community service, and now her county service, Supervisor Holly Mitchell. Thank you for joining us and thank you for the way that you've been saving lives. And Council Member Curran Price, who has done so much with and for USC and surrounding communities, whether it's attacking poverty or whether it's addressing racial justice. And then our public health and safety leaders. And there are no harder working people in America this year and all years than the folks like our fire chief, Ralph Terrazas, and our amazing head of the Department of Public Health, Dr. Barbara Ferrer. Give them both rounds of applause. They have not slept in a year. And Sean Penn, the co-founder of CORE, which has been our amazing partner in all of this. Thank you to you and to Ann Lee and to every CORE worker that has made this work. And of course, our host, our USC president, Carol Folt. Now, those are the most famous people, but we've got some lesser notables that are here with us today too, three of them. They're actually the dream team that I mentioned, and one of them literally played on the original dream team. But they today are the public health dream team showing all communities how important this is. Please give a warm LA welcome to Irvin Johnson, Danny Trejo, and Arsenio Hall. These folks have been friends on so many efforts over so many years, but they're standing up to show us that this is all of our responsibility. And we're so looking forward to hearing from each one of these folks, but I wanna share some numbers just to kind of frame today's conversations. I'll, I'll be playing the part of Dr. Barbara Ferrer so she can rest for this one. So infections continue to drop in our county. Our seven day average stands now at 648 daily cases. Just remember a couple months ago when we had days with 20,000 plus in a single day, thanks to the good work of the people of Los Angeles, our public health professionals and others, 648 daily cases. Today there are just 719 people, 719 too many, but way down. That is more than a 90% reduction of people in our hospitals and a 16% decrease since last week. And the number of patients in our intensive care units is at its lowest level in more than five months since mid-October. This is a real cause for optimism, a feeling that has been in short supply this past year. But I wanna make something very clear. We're not out of the woods yet. We're not at the other side of this crisis and our destination is not an automatic one. It's as if we're approaching a yellow light we can decide to continue to slow down and to stop this, or we can hit the accelerator and see COVID continue to skyrocket as we're seeing now troublingly in other states. We know exactly what it takes to prevent a surge. Wearing a mask or two. Where'd I put my masks? It probably blew away. Um, finally, making sure that we continue to social distance, wash our hands, keep that space between us, air circulation, which is one of our greatest weapons, and finally, as we'll be showing today, by getting your vaccine when your time is up. When you're eligible, you can book your appointment or sign up to receive updates through the city at coronavirus.lacity.org slash vax appointment. 
And you can also contact the county. As we said, due to the great work of this county and all of our partners, we think there's probably more vaccination sites here than any county in America, and maybe more per capita than any county in America. Now, I mentioned that this USC University Park site is one of seven permanent sites the city has running, and we also have the mobile, or MOVE, clinics. MOVE stands for Mobile Outreach for Vaccine Equity, and from the beginning of this, I know the county and we looked at early numbers and said this is unacceptable when we see numbers in black and brown communities way underrepresented population. Remember early on in this crisis when we saw deaths around America being doubled for black Americans versus the represented population, we jumped into action, surged testing in neighborhoods like South LA, and were able to cut black deaths to under the represented percentage in Los Angeles. It's the same efforts we're doing now to reach those hardworking frontline workers, their family members, low-income communities, dense households, to make sure that we bring the vaccine to you. And so far, our MOVE clinics have administered over 36,000 doses to vulnerable Angelinos, over 90% people of color. And this matters because we know people of color have been disproportionately impacted. And so I want to speak to trust. I've said there's the four T's to make this work. First, speak the truth, that this vaccine is for you. It will protect you. It will save your life, your family member's life, your neighbor's life. Speak from trust, trusted messengers like the ones we have here today, people that we know. Watch them get a vaccine. See that this is not only safe, it is the safest route forward. And then meet people where they are in technology and transportation with free rides like we have here uh, through Uber, uh, through technology where we're phone banking people who might not have a smartphone or a computer connection and taking care of their appointments for them. Each one of the three vaccines that LA County is administering that have been approved, Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson, are safe and highly effective. None of them is better than the other. As we often say to our kids, you get what you get and you don't get upset. We never asked our flu vaccines who the makers were. These are approved, good, and life-saving vaccines. To prove that point a little later, when we see Irving, Magic, Danny, and Arsenio get their shots, they're going to be administered by no other than Chief Ralph Tarasas, who last gave a shot 25 years ago. <laughs> Together, those three vaccines, and every one of us, no, he actually, I witnessed him do some more, more recently, so don't worry. <laughs> He's known as the impaler, so don't, don't hold that against him. But to prove the point when they get those shots, we know that these three vaccines will help us end this pandemic. And one last word on ending the pandemic before I turn it over to the other speakers, along with the dedicated people and organizations standing here with us. We have another powerful tool in this fight to put COVID-19 in the rearview mirror. And that has been with the passage of the American Rescue Plan. And I want to thank President Biden and Vice President Harris. I want to thank our Congress because it gives us additional funding to boost our efforts to get shots in people's arms and money in people's pockets. It's going to help us step up the production of vaccines and there'll be more resources dedicated to studying and stopping this virus. So with that good news, let me turn it over to a woman who has been a partner in our efforts together across all of our borders, somebody who has taken the heat and made the decisions that literally mean that tens of thousands of Angelinos who might not be with us are still alive and will survive this. Our friend and extraordinary public servant, Dr. Barbara Ferrer. Good afternoon, and, and thank you so much, Mayor Garcetti, for your introduction, most importantly, for your outstanding leadership throughout this very long year. The city and the mayor's office have led a superbly effective response uh, since the pandemic began, and we're especially grateful for your continued partnership. I also want to express my gratitude to Supervisor Holly Mitchell and the entire County Board of Supervisors for their brilliant governance and exceptional commitment to the 10 million people that call Los Angeles County home, and especially for insisting that we focus on ensuring equity in all of our response and vaccination efforts. None of us can do this work alone, and everyone living and working in LA has benefited greatly from the many extraordinary local leaders. So I want to extend deep appreciation to Council Member Price representing the 9th District, and to Dr. Fault, the visionary president of USC, for all they're doing to help us get to the other side of the pandemic. And Sean Penn, for us Angelinos, you are also a local leader. And we thank you so much for all the excellent work being done by CORE 
throughout our community. You first stepped up with testing strategies and solutions, and now with vaccinating thousands and thousands of people every day. None of the work has been easy this past year. We have collectively witnessed unbelievable devastation. Almost 23,000 lost lives, tens of thousands of people losing livelihoods, and children dealing with stress, loss, and uncertainty, the magnitude of which most adults have never experienced. Throughout the pandemic, black, brown, and native communities have been harder, hit harder than any others, seeing higher rates of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. We know why this is happening. Decades of systemic racism and inequitable distribution of the very resources that support good health have left these communities especially vulnerable to the pandemic. In order to tackle the stark injustices this pandemic has laid bare, the vaccine rollout must be laser focused on addressing issues of equity and considerations for reducing barriers to vaccination. And this is not about talk. It's about making sure that doses are prioritized and easily accessible for individuals, every individual in a hard hit community. Part of our work is also ensuring that folks have accurate information about vaccine safety and effectiveness so they're able to make informed decisions and speak with trusted community folks about their concerns. So a million thanks, Magic Johnson, Danny Trejo, and Arsenio Hall for supporting our community and lending your voices today to amplify the message that yes, these vaccines are safe and yes, they will save lives. Being willing to share your story about why you chose to get vaccinated and why this is an important step we can take to care for each other will make a big difference. I feel very blessed to be with all of you today. Thank you so much. Here. Why don't you keep it, keep it, I'll, I'll spray it. Thank you so much, Dr. Ferrer. And now I'd like to welcome Irving Magic Johnson, uh, who's gonna be getting the Pfizer vaccine today. Uh, this is a man who gave so much joy to Los Angeles as a player for the now, once again, world champion Lakers, who is one of the owners of the world champion Dodgers. His impact with his football club, which is the best stadium anywhere in America, right over there across the street, and the Sparks means that he has contributed not just in sports, but the way he has given back and invested in our communities. Um, he has been also not just an incredibly successful and socially conscious entrepreneur, but he's been somebody who's spoken about public health very personally and made sure that he has always put his actions and the power of his platform to use at saving other people's lives. So thank you for bringing that magic here today and being part of our Triple Double. Please welcome Irvin Magic Johnson. Break down for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Garcetti. With your leadership, we have so many in incredible testing sites. When I think about when you first started Dodger Stadium, the Forum, and now we're at USC, but also now all over the city of Los Angeles and and in the black and brown community, and that's very, very important. So thank you for your leadership during this pandemic, but also your first term and now your second term, so thank you. Um, I am so happy to be here with Danny and, and my 40-year friend, Arsenio Hall, and uh, to take this vaccination because it's so important that I've been doing everything the right way. You know, wearing my mask, you know, cleaning my hands all the time. I've been taking a COVID-19 test seemed like every two weeks it seems like <laughs> but now the most important thing now is to get this vaccine and uh, to ease my mind I've done all my research and homework and I consulted my doctors and they said this is what I should be doing and I want to do it for me and I want to do it for my family but also for my community too at the same time so I'm so happy to be here can't wait to get this shot and I can't wait to get my second shot too. So it's gonna ease my mind that I'm gonna be okay and I, hopefully I can live for a long time. So God bless everybody. 
Also, I want to congratulate USC men's team as well as I know we're on the campus of SC, but I better congratulate UCLA too for reaching the Sweet 16. So uh, I hope both of them can make it to the championship. So God bless everybody. Thank you for having me. That would be an incredible final. Don't ask me who I'm going to root for because I don't want to make a choice. So congratulations. Next, um, we know and love Danny Trejo. I was at a Rams game uh, a couple seasons ago, and there's some big athletes that get big rounds of applause. But when Danny's picture comes up on the screen, there's nobody who unites this city like Danny Trejo. Also, another committed entrepreneur and investor in the community. Born in Echo Park, which my family has called home as well, an Angelino through and through, uh, a man who's now the heart of the Valle de San Fernando, an activist and intervention counselor. And when we launched last year All In For LA campaign, he didn't hesitate to join. He appeared in a short film that called on all Angelinos to remain indoors while COVID-19 was still a danger to our health. Every weekend he texts me uh, messages from the homeboys, from the skateboarders, from the folks that he's talking to, telling them to put on their masks. Uh, he pioneered that on the set of what he's been doing. And uh, we know him as El Machete, but today we're going to call him the syringe. Here he is, Danny Trejo. Uh, I'm Danny Trejo, and I'm really, really proud to be born in Los Angeles and uh, raised in Los Angeles. And uh, <laughs> I'm not that short. Stop that. I, I challenge you to the hoop. Remember that. You know, I, I have to congratulate everyone that, that's doing this job because uh, Sunday we passed out uh, 300 bowls of food along with uh, uh, the Poly Project uh, for the homeless and it was almost it was so gratifying to see a lot of the homeless wearing masks and even before they came out of their tents they would say hold on let me put on my mask so you know we're, we're doing the job we, we can't slow down we got to keep it up i'm so proud to take this this shot and i want to know i know there's a lot of even in my neighborhood there's a lot of tough guys that are talking about y'all don't need no shot yeah but homes you know what maybe your family does you know so if you don't take it for yourself you know what take it for your family because i you know, i want to keep my kids safe and uh, I want to make sure that uh, that you know anybody around me is safe so God bless you and thank you and like I said I, I, I'm taking this for me and for everybody around me God bless you and thank you mayor thank you mayor Garcetti And Danny's going to be getting the Moderna vaccine today. You've won the Moderna vaccine, Danny. Congratulations. Our next speaker is Arsenio Hall. Uh, he's going to be getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So in two weeks, while you guys are still at home, he's going to be ready to go. But he's a comedian. Let me, that's it? I, I'm sorry. But, but, in Espanol. Sí. Para todos, pa todos los mexicanos y toda la raza, por favor, agarren este. Es muy importante para la familia. Dios te bendiga a todos. And, Forgive me uh, for interrupting me. I just got, I got starstruck when you came up. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate you. So we want to make sure, and I'll be coming back to some stuff in Spanish after we hear our other speakers too. But we all know and love Arsenio Hall. Uh, he is a man who's brought us together as a comedian, a talk show host, a writer, a producer, an actor, a late night legend. And he's shown up in screens across homes in LA and, and beyond right now in the recently released Coming to America 2, which we've been waiting a long time. We are so glad he's here. As we said, he's going to be getting the Johnson Johnson vaccine. Please give a warm LA welcome to the one and only Arsenio Hall. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm glad the mayor and the doctor have given all the statistics and all the important stuff to you because I don't know all that. I actually came here because I thought Johnson & Johnson was a small black company owned by two brothers. <laughs> and I just was informed by magic that no, it's not. It's not that. So, <laughs> so I'm here to get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. My, my mother begged me to come. She said, if Irvin go down there, you go down there with Irvin. 
I said, okay, ma. She's, she's hard on getting people vaccinated. Uh, we had Taco Tuesday yesterday. And I said, ma, you know, we kind of don't know what's in the vaccine. And she said, you don't know what's in that taco you eating. And so she's right. <laughs> and I trust our scientists a lot more than I trust my mother's cooking. <laughs> Thank you, Irvin, for inviting me to do it. Uh, we got to do this because we got to get back to normal, and this is the only path to it. By the way, Donald J. Trump and Barack Obama both got this. They don't agree on nothing, <laughs> but they both got vaccines. So God bless you all. Stay safe, and let's do this. Thank you. Thank you, Arsenio, so much. And it's my pleasure now to introduce our great supervisor, who I mentioned is not only serving in our Board of Supervisors, being elected just this past November, but a deep history as a fighter for the people of California in the Assembly, in the State Senate, as a budget chair. She's uh, helped expand health care access, addressed systemic racism, and championed criminal justice reform. Please welcome Holly Mitchell. I told Arsenio I was going to call his mother and tell her what he said. Um, hello, Los Angeles. It is so wonderful to see you all out here, and I'm thrilled that these, the new LA Dream Team are, are going to uh, step up to the plate and let everybody know that this is what we all must do. I have the privilege of representing the second supervisorial district that you're sitting right in the middle of. And just yesterday, 490 Angelinos tested positive for COVID. Those numbers are drastically down, as Dr. Ferrer said, but we still have a long way to go. And since being elected November, we have worked tirelessly, the team that I have the privilege of leading, have worked tirelessly to make sure that the residents of this district, my Latinx and black brothers and sisters, had, ha had access to testing and have access to the vaccine. We hear a lot about this notion about vaccine hesitancy, and I want to dispel that myth right now. It's about access to the vaccine, and that's why being here at USC, that's why the mega sites at the forum and all of the community-based partners, over 300 that the county has partnered with, to make sure that in their own neighborhoods, at school sites, at the Hollywood, Hollywood Park, at churches, people can come to trusted partners in their community to ask questions and get the shot. So let me just say, in the Hamilton song, Hamilton said, I'm not gonna miss my shot. We all know Magic never missed a shot. And so no one is gonna take, miss their opportunity to miss, to take the shot today. And we're asking that every Angelino Ask your doctor, talk to trusted partners, talk to community clinics, the community-based organizations about why this is important for our collective future so our kids can return to school, so the USC students can come back next year and continue to live their full lives. So thank you all for coming. Arsenio, woo, 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 woo. we're glad that you're here, gonna take your shot too, and I'm thrilled to see every level of government stepping up to the plate. It's times like this that we all rely on government to do what's best for all of us. And so this is a perfect example. The federal level, the state level, county and city are working collaboratively in a seamless way, like quite frankly, Mayor, I've never seen before in my lifetime. I want to thank firefighters, the Office of Emergency Services, everyone who's come together to make this process seamless for you. So don't miss your shot. Take advantage of the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate you. Next, I'd like to ask Curran Price to come up, a man who has also served at the state level before coming back to serve here locally. He is tireless out there. You'll see him handing out food, working the vaccine sites personally, uh, working on things that I'm excited to work with him on, things like guaranteed basic income to make sure we deal with the economic devastation of this. And I want to thank him for his leadership as chair of our Economic Development Committee and City Council as well as the council member from the 9th District. Please welcome Curran Price. Thank you, Mayor. I am just so honored, honored to be here uh, as we as we celebrate. A uh, special shout out to uh, Mayor Garcetti, his leadership, our supervisor, uh, Holly Mitchell, who is providing uh, extraordinary leadership at the county level, and all of our special guests here. Just welcome. You know, the, the uh, steps that we are taking today to make sure we are vaccinated 
protects us individually and it protects our community. Uh, and it's important that we all step up to the plate when we can. Uh, my office recognized early on uh, in the pandemic that we had to think outside of the box by really focusing on a targeted uh, approach to getting these vaccines done. As a representative of the area that uh, has a, a high amount of uh, poverty and, and, and low amounts of resources, it was important that we leverage these resources in a way that get the shots uh, in the arms. Uh, it was important that we brought together uh, the, the vaccine directly to our neighborhoods through a trusted pipeline, community organizations, schools, uh, and organizations. Reaching out to our faith-based community, faith-based organizations, local nonprofits, uh, community leaders, and community neighbors, we've made it our mission to hit the pavement, to knock on doors, to make the calls, uh, and make sure that our residents are aware uh, that these shots are available and they can access them in an easy way. Uh, our undertaking has resulted in more than 5,000 individuals getting their COVID-19 vaccines uh, across a variety of parks uh, over the past several weeks uh, with the support uh, of our mayor and our fire department. We've had pop-up centers at South Park Rec Center. We're there this week, in fact. Uh, Green Meadows Rec Center and also uh, Vermont Square. Uh, but we're not done yet. We are not done yet. And we're going to be looking for the support of our mayor, supervisor, and other leaders as we expand our outreach to include uh, vaccination sites uh, like at churches and public housing projects uh, and senior homes around. Besides, uh, uh, as each of these sectors has opened up, uh, private buses, vans, and my own staff have been driving CD neighbors uh, to the vaccine sites. Uh, we've tackled each group uh, as we've gotten the green light from the county uh, and the state. Uh, older adults living in senior facilities, restaurant staff, uh, educators at our local schools. These allies and hundreds of others have taken up our offer to receive their vaccines, and these actions are going to make our communities safe and make them able to remain open. It's of the utmost importance for us to have trust in the science community in regard to the effectiveness of the vaccines and continue to follow the recommendations of the CDC. Uh, and as the supervisor said, it's not uh, hesitancy. We just want to make sure there is access. We'll take the shot if we can get it. Uh, I was an early proponent of taking the vaccine. Uh, and when my turn came, I took it. Uh, so you should do the same. We've, we've taken steps uh, toward inching our way to include uh, inoculation for everybody. There's not going to be any excuses. And we're going to be chipping away at this until everyone in our community has their little card and can uh, show and demonstrate that they've had the shot. Uh, I'm going to ask those that are going to get their shots today, including uh, Magic, uh, Arsenio, and, and Danny, to become COVID-19 vaccinated ambassadors, as uh, I'm sure they will be. Because if we're, we can't rest until everyone, everyone has full immunity. So remember, neighbors and friends, get your shot. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Councilmember Price. And now I'd like to ask the president and the host of our president of our campus and the, and the host of this event to come forward, Dr. Carol Folt. Um, USC's partnership has been integral. Um, long before we even opened up this vaccination site. Whether it was the School of Pharmacy that's given us clinicians, worked with flu vaccines, whether it's the studies that we've done hand-in-hand in hand with USC on testing, uh, they have been such an amazing partner and one of the secret weapons in our success in our fight against COVID-19. Thank you on behalf of uh, the city of Los Angeles and I'm sure 10 million grateful souls in the county uh, for the work that you and your colleagues have done. Carol Fulton, thanks for hosting us today. bring my own props. Irvin, I was going to offer it to you in case you needed it, but I guess you did okay. <laughs> Next time. Oh, hello everyone. It is absolutely wonderful to be here. It is really truly an honor to be a part of this amazing group of people, to be able to be a part of this wonderful opportunity. And the truth is, this is a privilege for USC to be a part of doing our bit for all of our people, for all of our neighborhoods, and together with such amazing partners. We are so excited about it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Supervisor Mitchell, Councilman Price. You help USC all the time. 
We work with Dr. Farrar all the time to try to get things right. It's wonderful for us. I'm excited to see what Sean Penn is doing. And to be part of the new dream team is really an, an exciting moment for us. I also want to say thanks to the LA Fire Department, the core program. I mean, a huge part of this that's so important to us. And just mention, you know, we all have seen how far we've been coming in our vaccination uh, efforts. But as you were saying, equity and access is the big driver, and that is behind what we're trying to do today. This new Flower Street location is absolutely going to help in that way. It's a true partnership that we even got here. And just to give you a little perspective, it's going to fill seven floors of this parking structure and 5,000 vaccinations a day. So that is um, something we've been just could have dreamed about before and to see that come to fruition is so important. Most importantly, it's right here in South LA. And that is what we really wanted to be a part of. Um, as you probably all know, recent data has shown that 4% of South LA residents have been vaccinated as of mid-February. And yet 18 percent or 16 percent of the COVID-19 uh, patients were coming from this area. So clearly access is going to make a big difference there. And we're excited about it. We're excited that the state set aside 40 percent of its vaccine supply to help make this happen. That is really important. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, at this site, people can come in by appointment. They can drive up. They can walk up. We're going to make sure that they can get the vaccination and they're going to be encouraged by the greatest group of people possible. So I just want to thank again uh, the city and Mayor Garcetti. Thanks for helping us to be a part of this. Um, there have been so many vaccines already administered across the city at Dodger Stadium, Lincoln Heights, as you heard about it, and now here on the University Park campus. We're working hard to get that done, and I want to just mention one more group of people, and that are the people that are going to be administering the vaccines in this facility. We are so lucky. We have some of our pharmacy members of the USC pharmacy team here. They're right there. And I want to tell you that our healthcare workers, as you know, have been working 24-7, all of them, like our emergency fire department safety officers, people that have given up a lot for their families to do it. And what that means is that when people come here, amazing, kind, and caring people are going to be the ones administering the vaccine. So thank you. It's great to see them here. Shout out to everyone getting the vaccines today. By the way, it does not hurt. Just to let you know. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Fight on. They always say that just before it hurts. So don't worry. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Uh, finally, I want to, uh, I don't need introduction cards for this one. Um, Sean Penn is an angel in the city of angels. Uh, somebody who I've seen on the front lines in quiet ways and powerful ways build something that few others uh, would have had the stomach, uh, the heart, and the intelligence to put together. And I know he represents the tip of the spear for CORE, who surrounds us, is downstairs, uh, places like Dodger Stadium, where we've topped 10,000 in a single day in one of the nation's largest vaccination sites. Literally none of this would have happened. This man is responsible for a lot of Angelinos being alive today as well. The one and only Sean Penn. Yeah. See, that was my introduction of him. It's all good. <laughs> I can take these out of here before they blow away. Uh, thanks all for being here today. I want to thank the 600 core staff, in the city and countywide here in Los Angeles, the 3,000 nationwide. Um, I want to assure um, uh, Danny and, and Magic and Arsenio that uh, uh, the, the chief did indeed get the how to vaccinate link from me last night from YouTube. So. You guys will be uh, covered. Uh, this has been a really unprecedented partnership, uh, public-private partnership, and, and, and would not have happened without the uh, faith and leadership of Mayor Garcetti, who put this extraordinary team of, of people from the county and the city together and uh, took a leap of faith uh, uh, with our staff working under the mentorship of Chief Teresa's uh, Assistant Chief Fortman, 
the mayor, Deputy Mayor Gorel, so, such an extraordinary uh, a group. There's, there's uh, a year now we've all been invested in this. Um, a lot of uh, pain and suffering, a lot of loss. Uh, but as we look forward, it's, there's going to be an enormous amount to celebrate and, and a lot to maintain in the recovery of how this kind of joint work between citizens and government can work. So I just uh, uh, thank you all. Thank you, Sean. And then, finalmente, in Espanol, and then we're going to do the shots. Buenas tardes a todos. Y estamos aquí en el centro de vacunación más nuevo de la ciudad en USC para hablar de esta vacuna de que salva vidas. En Los Ángeles tenemos siete sitios permanentes y ocho clínicas móviles que traen vacunas directamente a los que viven en los vecindarios más afectados de la ciudad. Hasta ahora nuestras clínicas móviles han administrado 34 mil dosis a los angelinos más vulnerables y hemos distribuido más de 90% de las dosis a personas de color. Estamos aquí para asegurarnos de que la gente sepa que cada una de estas vacunas es segura. Cada una es efectiva, moderna, Pfizer, Johnson y Johnson. Las tres tienen el poder de salvar su vida y la vida de un ser querido. Desde diciembre hemos administrado casi 653 mil vacunas en los sitios de la ciudad. Hoy el jefe de bomberos terrazas nos va a ayudar a vacunar a tres angelinos más. Irving, Mágica, Johnson, Danny, Trejo, El Machete y Arsenio Hall. Tres amigos de mí, tres amigos de la ciudad y tres líderes con esta demostración uh, ayudará a la gente de Los Ángeles a recibir su dosis. Puede ayudar a acabar con la pandemia con vacunarse tan pronto que sea posible. Para programar su cita o para recibir noticias, visite coronavirus.lacity.org diagonal vax appointment. Gracias, and with that, let's get some shots. What do you say, Chief? Thank you. Come on forward. actually feels good. It feels like like joy is going into my soul. You didn't bleed at all. All right. Good job. Good job. Hey, as the pastor in Coming to America said, if loving you is wrong, <laughs> I don't want to be right. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Amigos, yeah, you gotta wait here for the day, sir. Los Angeles. Okay, you got it, you got it. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh, good, huh? Oh, good. 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 Oh, good.
Congratulations. Thank you for doing this. Show us the car. Show us the car. Hey! Let's go. 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 Put your arms up here. Put your arms up here. Me and Magic are the same stars. That's right. <laughs> Take a lot of these, please. Can you tilt this way? Yeah. Okay. Magic? Okay. Hold on, don't leave it, guys. Turn, 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 One more. Marcinio, go. One more back here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay, it's one below the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Over here. Oh, okay. Over here. 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 I'm eyeballing that syringe. That's a lot of money. Down here, down here. Okay, down. Right here. To the right, to the right. To the right. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Everybody, yes, yes. Okay. All right, go ahead, look. Okay, great. So we'll do you first. Sure, right? thanks. Um, all right, so we've got a couple of categories. The first one is um, a request for an answer in Spanish. Sure. Um, why are you inviting celebrities to talk about the disparities in vaccination? And do you think that this effort will help get out the word? Es muy importante a tener personas que nosotros tenemos confianza en estos momentos, a dar la confianza que necesitamos uh, con estas vacunas. Pero las buenas noticias es uh, el, las actitudes de la vacunación cada día es más y más fuerte, especialmente en nuestra comunidad, porque nuestra comunidad uh, si, ha, ha visto muchas, muchas uh, muertes, mucha gente en los hospitales y es necesario con personas como Dani Trejo, uh, líderes en nuestra comunidad, uh, son ejemplos para todos nosotros de proteger nuestras familias y este es un ejemplo de este. Great. ¿No? Um, and Another question about the city controllers report. Uh, can you respond to the report that says that illegal dumping in Los Angeles is getting worse, contributing to urban blight and health risks? Yeah, sure. You know, I've been passionate about uh, going after illegal dumping for 20 years, and there's no question during the pandemic that we saw that explode, not only because some per people were working at home, but also because we saw um, directions from CDC and others to, that led folks like our Caltrans agencies to see the freeways uh, barely get cleaned up. And I've spoken to the governor about that, spoken to our Caltrans leadership about that and certainly for us here we're gonna do two or three different things one which I announced a few years ago we've more than tripled the number of trash cans that get regularly picked up and that are out there on the streets public trash cans uh, two is bringing kind of the the proactive teams in the regular places we see illegal dumping and I think people sometimes confuse illegal dumping with what's happening around homeless encampments most of the legal dumping is just that it's not the result of folks who are unhoused it's people who come we see downtown whether it's a warehouse that illegally dumps old fruit whether it's people who travel into Los Angeles or a vacant lot to dump things after construction. Um, so I look forward to looking, uh, I just saw the headlines of the report today, but I want to thank the controller for his great report. And it's one of the Clean Streets LA initiatives that we launched a few years ago that I hope coming out of this, um, uh, this pandemic, we'll see a priority not just here, but throughout the state. Okay, a couple questions about Echo Park Lake. Sure. Um, unhoused people living at the park say that they have not been given formal notice of a clearing of the area. What is happening there? And can, can, you, can you confirm whether formal notice was given to the unhoused community before the area is being cleared? Sure, there needs to be, and I support formal notice being given to before that happens. The, and it's, you know, it's not to be cleared, it's to be able to do the work at the lake that needs to happen, as we've seen in Venice when there was encampments on Rose Avenue and there was public works projects that needed to happen there too. It's the same category of stuff but I've been very very impressed the last few days by the number of placements um, I know over the weekend it was down to 19 people that were left living there um, it, with over 120 tents but only 19 people as of the count that the independent third party folks that work there uh, gave us and we got to continue that and I'm very proud that we have a place for every single person to be a safe hotel room 
and from those hotel rooms, apartments that we have purchased as well for many. So this is exactly what we need when we, whether it's a public works improvement like at the lake or whether it's longer term in communities where we have long term encampments. I want to see the weeks of work and outreach that's happened, for instance, in Echo Park be in any neighborhood. And I don't want us to ever do that where we don't have the rooms available. The good news is we've worked really hard and those rooms are available. 100% of the people that are there have a room to sleep in that's much safer. We've had four people die there and we can't have any more. Is there a timetable to move out the people who are still living in the area? Um, well, there's people who live all around the area. I, so, I like mean, people who are homeless who are living in the in the parks. I don't know if there's a specific one, but obviously the work has to begin in the next you know few days um, after after the uh, the park is closed. But you know, we're asking all the folks, Lhasa, Urban Alchemy, some of the other great uh, nonprofits and volunteer groups to continue helping to make sure 100% of people know that there is a placement. Some people always, you know, some smaller percentage say, no, I don't want to go indoors, period. Um, and so given the work that needs to go on, they'll have to move on from there. But otherwise, uh, the good news, as I said, is 100% of people have a place to go. Uh, will the LAPD be involved at all in um, moving any homeless people who don't want to leave the park? Not that I know of, unless, you know, called in if there's a public safety issue. Obviously, we've had public safety issues. Like I said, four people died as when the LA Times reporter was there, a knife fight. I mean, these things, we, we can't wait for somebody else to die and police are there to make sure folks are protected. But no, my understanding is it'll be done wreck and parks. Um, and, you know, then that will be done by the contractor who's taking care of the work. Uh, last one on Echo Park. Uh, why have the plans for the renovations at the, at the lake been shrouded in secrecy? Uh, do people who use the park for recreation or those who are living there right now not deserve to know what's going on? I, I don't know about that. I know that there's been very public uh, discussions about the water quality. I worked very hard at past Proposition O that allowed us to redo Echo Park Lake. And now uh, we've seen our TMDLs, our t total managed daily loads, which are legal requirements for our water, uh, go sideways, vandalism, uh, replanting. We do this with parks all the time um, but this has been I think everybody who's been there don't have to shroud anything in secrecy know how hard hit the park has been and and I do hope that all the departments will share very transparently the work that's being done mm -hmm. okay a couple questions about vaccines sure uh, what's your view on vaccine hunters who are not yet eligible for the doses but are standing in line outside clinics for leftovers uh, do you think that what they're doing is helping or hurting the vaccine process and do you encourage people to do this no, I don't encourage and happy to have Dr. Fair talk about it. We don't want to see any waste. I'm proud of the LA City ones. We have basically zero waste. So if you're vaccine hunting one of our sites, you're not going to, and you're not qualified, you're probably not going to get one at one of our sites. I think the county is similar, but there's some places that have been less efficient and we don't want to see anything get wasted. So to me, it's not bad to have something go into someone's arm and appreciate the efforts of people uh, that are getting that out there. I hope this will be a non-issue soon as we continue to expand vaccine access, but happy to see if Dr. Fair wants to add anything. said it best. I mean, there's, there's, we've gotten a lot better at vaccinating folks and uh, there's no waste anymore. We, we really have really good processes. Uh, I think there was a lot of confusion at the beginning. People were drawing syringes way early. Uh, we now know don't draw syringes until you know you have people in line that have already been registered. So I would really encourage people not to bother with sort of that vaccine hunting because you're really unlikely to find a lot of places that have leftover doses. Um, and most of us have a plan in mind already if we have, you know, really, which is less than a, a half a dozen leftover syringes. We're vaccinating volunteers who are working at the vaccination sites. I just don't think it's an efficient way uh, to go about getting a vaccine. But I totally agree with the mayor. We do not throw away any doses and we have all kinds of contingency plans mm -hmm. to make sure nobody else in the county does either. People can return doses to us uh, late at night even, at eight o'clock at night, if they're about to expire. And we will run what we call a midnight clinic hmm. and call folks who are eligible over to come and get vaccinated so that no doses go to waste in the county. Um, Dr. Fair, I have a couple questions for you. Uh, Mayor, would you like to finish your set first or Dr. Fair, do you want to? Okay, all right, great. So um, several other states are starting to open up vaccinations to anyone 16 plus, And there's um, some other states and even some California counties that are now vaccinating people who are 50 and older. When will LA County open vaccine eligibility to a wider group and when will it open to everyone? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, uh, all along, we've been doing what the state's been asking us to do in terms of prioritization, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, our hope is, of course, uh, like the mayor said, that we're going to move fairly quickly 
into being able to expand. But I want to remind folks, there's 5.5 million people currently eligible for vaccines here in LA County with those people that meet the criteria at the moment. And we have not received uh, 5 million doses yet. And most of the people who are getting vaccinated need two doses. Uh, so we've got to be sensible about the path forward. We'd also encourage the state when we do open up, because there will still be scarcity, to really open up by first prioritizing getting vaccine into the communities that are the hardest hit. So if we've got limited doses and we're going to expand to everybody, let's do everybody in South LA, in East LA. Let's do everybody in the East San Gabriel Valley, up in Antelope Valley, places where communities have been really, really hard hit and we still haven't been able to bring enough doses into those mm -hmm. communities. Have you ever been given a target number of how many vaccines LA County should be receiving out of the total number of doses that are given to California? You know, it's a really good question and we don't actually have, a, a, you know, the answer. Uh, there has been no target number and we also haven't received yet uh, numbers to be able to plan in advance. I do want to say I'm, I'm really excited about the partnership we have now with the state and with Blue Shield. Uh, one reason why I think this partnership could be helpful is if we can get better transparency about how many doses come in and in total how many doses end up available to be in the arms of people in our county. I frankly uh, am pleased when we have a federal partnership with our pharmacies or we have FEMA standing up sites uh, in LA County because these are all additional doses for county residents but it would be nice if it was well coordinated and we all had visibility to what was coming in and where it was going. So LA County is still not getting that three week look ahead? From the no, state? we don't have a three week look, look ahead yet. Um, last question for you. Uh, Pfizer said that it would dramatically increase its shipments by mid-March and both Pfizer and Moderna have said that they will distribute at least 100 million doses by the end of this month. Have you seen that reflected in what the county is getting? You know, we, we share with everybody how many doses we get every week. So you know as well as I do that we haven't had any significant increases. Uh, we are anxious to see those increases. Uh, I will say again that with the federal partnership with the pharmacies and with the work that's done at the FEMA sites, there are more doses coming into LA County. But uh, every week you hear me report, you know, this week we had capacity for 635,000 appointments and we got 280,000 doses. And of that, over 55% had to go to second doses. This is a missed opportunity that needs to get fixed with more doses. Mm -hmm. And actually, I've got a question that's kind of for both of you, so maybe a nice baton passing situation. <laughs> um, uh, recently, we've seen more misinformation spreading online about loopholes that allow people to get vaccinated. Um, I'm sure you've seen some of them, a clinic that magically opened to entertainment workers, an event that accidentally got thousands of extra doses. Uh, what can be done to counter this? And how would you advise people to treat these kinds of rumors when they run across them? Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of these are unverified rumors. So I, I'd say the first thing is like, if it's not, if you don't see it on our website or the city's website, or it's not reported by a reputable media outlet, I take it with a grain of salt. Because uh, in general, I think there's been good coverage of what actually is happening. I'd also just say, uh, in general, most people are playing by the rules. They've been playing by the rules all along in this pandemic. We should give people a lot of credit for that. And I don't think people are going to be waiting much longer mm -hmm. to get their turn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well said. I'm not out of here. Yeah, I'm almost done. <laughs> okay, so Mayor, sure. specifically, there was a rumor over the weekend that Dodger Stadium had shut down early because there weren't enough doses for uh, there. Uh, not enough people had showed up for their appointment, and there were extra doses. Um, can you talk about that? And is the, has there been any change in supply or demand for the city sites that would yeah. lead to that kind of? I, I don't know that I can't verify that that, mm -hmm. that happened. Um, I don't know if somebody in my staff can tell me now. Uh, the folks who run Dodger Stadium are saying that didn't happen. Okay. So again, <laughs> there's like uh, so much of this, as we used to say in the Navy, is room int, rumor intelligence, which you chase down and learn nine out of 10 times isn't true. Um, and you find plenty of examples of it, but it doesn't mean they're widespread trends. I mean, we're talking about the entire human population. So do you find people who cheat? Yes. Do you find people who uh, bend the rules? Yes. But by and large, as Dr. Ferrer said, if we're batting, you know, 98, 99%, like you know, that's pretty darn good. Um, in general, though, um, our, I would mirror exactly what Dr. Ferrer said. We have stayed flat for like six weeks, seven weeks in our supply coming to the city. And I have spoken to um, the federal authorities, spoken to state authorities. 
I understand, and as Dr. Frere said, sometimes that's being given to other ex new programs that are being expanded, but when you have core workers, firefighters able to do really about 10 times more doses than we're able to give at Dodger Stadium, let's say today, mm -hmm. that's not using your resources efficiently. So I can't wait till that Pfizer and Moderna number bears out. I do believe the math of it. I've talked to the manufacturers. I've talked to the head executives of those companies. I keep asking, where are those doses? Mm -hmm. uh, last question. Mm -hmm. uh, are you considering expanding eligibility in LA earlier than what the state is planning for? I don't have the power to do that, but I certainly would welcome it. Mm -hmm. um, I've, as I've said, take the handcuffs off. I, I listen very carefully to Dr. Frere. I do think we need to go deep into different categories of the most vulnerable. And we're just starting, remember, a lot of people with medical vulnerabilities, so we should stick with that for a couple weeks. But if those numbers do come in, absolutely. I'd love to have the ability to go and do it by geography and go to a place like uh, you know, Pacoima or Boyle Heights um, or neighborhoods here in South LA that are still, while way down, the hardest hit and just get everybody done there because those are the places that usually spike up as well. Okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody.